Right, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's 3.17. My name is Henry Lau, and I'm from the Faculty of Engineering, the University of Hong Kong. Welcome to this series of online admission talk that is delivered by the Faculty of Engineering. Well, why are you here? I think thank you. First of all, in this uh, very moment, I must thank you, you all to be with us through this cyberspace to listen to what I'm saying. Of course, many of you may not know who I am, although from the virtual banner that you know I'm a teacher from the School of Engineering or Faculty of Engineering from Hong Kong University. But why am I standing here with this picture in the background and to share with you what I'm going to tell you, hopefully, give you a little bit of the insight and inspirations of what engineering is all about. The reason I'm standing here is because I have a passion to be an engineer. I didn't study in Hong Kong, I must admit. About 24 years ago, I returned from England, which now wasn't a very popular place because of the COVID-19 that European or Europe is not doing very well as compared to Hong Kong. But during that time, I have someone as a real engineer after graduating from school in England, working in a factory, cleaning things, and to try to adapt technology, science, to make something useful as an impact. I am a nuclear engineer, deploying robots to clean up nuclear waste in British Nuclear Fuels Limited, which is a company, it's an international company who deploy a lot of different technology in cleaning up nuclear disaster. Yesterday, or the day before, Japan is actually remembering the 311 tsunami and you probably remember that in Fukushima, four of the nuclear reactor actually breaks down and then exploded. And then none of once is now willing to go to that area, which used to be very nice picturesque area because of the nuclear fallout. As an engineer, we find solution in the past 10 years when I was working as an engineer to try to do the cleaning up job to try to rescue the environment as an engineer. Innovation, or what we call, you know, how we actually try to adapt new ideas to solve problems. As an innovator, I must say, in the past four or five years, I have, with my very good team at Hong Kong University, started up a number of startup companies spin off technology from research, and then making an impact so that as engineer, as an innovator, as an entrepreneur, going through how we, perhaps one of you, may be very interested in becoming an engineer who will be able to do something like this. In the next 15 minutes, what I'm going to tell you is some of my personal experience of how this could happen. And then what I'm going to do is to end with some of the very factual, very factual things that we do at the Hong Kong University engineering faculty in the five departments, how are we going to do that? And of course, when we finished, we, will go, we are going to have someone who is so much experienced in admission activities, which is the chairman of the engineering faculty admission committee, Professor Ken Yu Fong, to be with us today, that he will directly answer you any queries, whether from student, from parents, from teacher, from career master, any of the things that you may have with your mind after this talk. Now, what is innovation then? What is innovation? What is innovation? Can you see anything from here? No, isn't it? Why? I'm sure it's not breakdown. 
of our very, you know, fancy sort of display panel. But what we need here is something that echo back to the first slides that we have got. We didn't, you know, just put it at Hockley. Light is a very important thing to us this day. I'm sure during this time, I don't know how many thousand years ago, or is it a, a, a story, that this guy, because he cannot read in the evening, he tried to catch some fireflies to make a lamp. I don't know whether he's an engineer, but I'm sure he has engineering mind that he is doing something which is very interesting, very innovative. Okay, at this point, we have 80 or so participants. Can I ask you a question before I go on a little bit? So this guy looking at the lamps. Now, in this Zoom presentations, there is a function called polling. I want to see how many of you are in front of a pad, a computer, or something like that. Let me ask you a question. Well, since you 80, 90 of you are staying with me now, why are you doing so? Right, here you are. It's a poll. Can someone indicate, you can do more than one of this, why you are here so far before I go on? If you don't respond, we will close these sessions immediately. Anyone want to indicate any reasons why you are with me at this time? Holy sounds good. Okay. How many of you have responded? I can see some of you actually responded. Wow. Wow, not bad. We have over 60 responded. Now, okay, that's good. Let's display the results so that everyone can share what's about all this. Here you are. Wow, dear me. As I'm sure Professor Wong is very happy because all those who are coming has a passion and interest in engineering and I hope we can get all of you here in the coming year. Great, okay, let's carry on. Okay, let's get a pose, right? Now, as I say, innovations. In the old age, yes, we need light. So that guy, perhaps an engineer, catches fireflies to give us light. 3,000 years ago, this is indeed very much innovative. However, today, if you try to do something like this, Wow, people will say, sorry, I don't even know where we can actually get fireflies anymore. However, as this goes on, in about 1761 or something like that, here you are, I show you something. I don't know whether you know it. I put it close to the uh, you know, camera, right? Here you are, you got something like this. People, or I suppose engineer, start to appreciate when they actually heat up metal. When they heat up metal, it can give us light. About 300 years ago, 200 something years ago, it's not Thomas Edison who do that first. A guy called Kinnersley, who is a pastor, actually innovate. By heating metal, you get light, which is much stronger than fly fly lights. In 817 something, this is innovative. This is innovative. Then let me put something even closer for you to have a look. Here you are, here you are, right? See that? I'm sure you are seeing this already. This LED panel using a very special photoelectric effects in around, I think 1960s, 1960. That guy, some guys, I'm sure engineer, from Hippopacket, HP, innovate by using very low power, generate the first red LED. And then a real engineer, a real engineer, Nakamura, Nakamura, in 1994, I think, got a Nobel Prize of getting a high intensity white light LED out in 1995, a first commercially avail available 
LED. Now looking at these innovations, you can start to appreciate Nakamura is an engineer, and engineering getting a Nobel Prize because of the innovation of a physics theory putting into practice. How nice. And then the light bulbs, if not the fireflies. So let's go now to a little bit in the modern time. Last year, the top five engineering innovations that, you know, throughout the world, I will show you, you know, how, how they did it. First of all, here you are. Oh, this is not the one. Oh, I must say, this is what we are doing here in Hong Kong U. Isn't it very innovative? We make use of LED wall to do very good 3D filmings. You see? Wow. You know, at Hong Kong U, we got all these things that you can actually start to appreciate. So here we are. We come to the real thing. What is innovations? The first choice people choice of engineering innovation in 2019. First of all, is this what we call the impossible burgers. I don't know how many of you have tasted that. Some of you actually not in your head already, that it tastes exactly the real taste of a beef burgers, simply because engineers created this yeast cell to produce some real meat, like blood, you know, the blood taste of beef, and then they innovate this burger. This is one of the top choice in 2019. Next one, an autonomous ferry. You may say, oh, well, we've got autonomous car. But first of all, how many of you have been traveling an autonomous car? But some of you may already be traveling autonomous ship. If you go to Europe, this autonomous ferry actually prevented about 95% of the marine accidents, which is a great innovation where engineers try to put all these sensory signals, try to detect for any collisions, navigations, in the sea, a very good innovations. And then how about saving energy of propelling ships by putting an aerofoil wings onto a sailboat? Isn't it quite nice? You have been taking plane trips so often, but how about using aerofoil in the ships? This is available, it's called wing cell. Next one, material engineer. They actually build certain special materials so that it sucks up carbon dioxide in the, well, city areas. And, you know, material engineers actually build, you know, this mechanical tree, which actually sucks carbon dioxide. And a handful of those, a dozen of those, can help to clean our air, clean energy, isn't it? The last one, uh, I'm sorry, you know, this part was closed now because of the virus, but this very new park, the Galaxy's Edge or theme park in Florida, try to use what well, they call their engineer called Imagineers in Disney that combine their imagination and engineering innovations into creating a theme park, which they have real scale, you know, robotics and other experience that I must show you this video, which if we play it, then you can see what this is. Now, here you are. This is from Hong Kong U. Four years ago, we got a chance to actually participate in trying to build a virtual reality games for the Galaxy Edge Park, which I don't think any one of you have played this before unless you come to Hong Kong University to try it. We got this set up here, right here, in our virtual reality laboratories here, that you can use a virtual lightsaber to kill the, the droids and all these, you know, uh, you know uh, villains here. So you see, we are running, walking in the forefront of technology, okay? You like it so far? Let me ask you two more polls then. Here you are, if you are still with us, First of all, out of the five, you know, top choice in last year, which one do you like best? Okay, just a quick choice. You can pick more than one, I suppose. Here you are. Right, okay, thank you. We have about 50. Okay, we have 50 choice. 
Give you one more second. There you are. Okay, here you are. Let's get the results so that we can all share. Oh. Oh, the CO2 sucking tree. Oh, we are all worried about health and safety this day, right? Because of the virus. Huh? So let's get something actually help our environment. Okay, we remember that. Uh, I'm sure we will share these results with all our professors in Hong Kong University, and that's very important. Second questions. Second questions. Before I go on, let me ask you the second questions, please. Here you are. Before I tell you the answer or my interpretation of innovations, what is innovations then? Here you are, I've got five choices. Again, I give you a moment. Five, four, three, two, one. Here you are, that's it. Can we share the results, please? Oh, woo. New idea and creativity. Wow, I don't know my slide had been leaked already because uh, I think every one of you, most of you actually got the right answer. Anyway, there's no right or wrong, really. I think I, all this could be right. Okay, that's good, let's carry on. Let's carry on with, with the slides a little bit. Here you are, here you are. Ooh, we got markup. People are actually making notes, right, as we go on, which is excellent. Okay, here you are. General opinions, all along, when I look up and ask people about, you know, what is innovations, here you are. However, new ideas, creativity, all this would probably mean something. But how will engineers here has its role? Look at this, here you are. This is a survey taken over the past years about what is innovations. Well. We got percentage here, but what the answer? Let's go on. First of, of all, 60% of people think it's a new idea, so you got it right. You got it right. And the 60% is to actually be able to execute the idea. Now, if you haven't been able to just think, but not actually put into practice, I don't think you make an impact. Engineers, engineers take a lot of idea, whether it's simple ideas or, you know, a very complicated idea, and then make it works. Here we are, we are engineers, we do that. Next, what we do is that we are solving real challenges, and then we really add value. Now, your choice of all these, you know, carbon dioxide sucking trees of this is that we want to improve the situation, we want to make an impact, we want to actually add value to our economy. Don't think that only finance people, business people talk about money. You know, as an entrepreneur who actually runs a number of uh, companies, uh, startup company, well, if we don't add values, I think we will fold up immediately, very quickly indeed, and didn't actually do anything. Well, and then obviously we should benefit ourselves and then make a difference, make a change to the society and to be, you know, moving ourselves forward and then finally try to create new markets. Look at Amazon. Look at Apple, look at a lot of all these top technology companies. They actually move forward and then create their markets. Who can create markets then? Isn't it engineers getting the good idea and do that? So to me, engineering or innovation is a process which we are the catalyst. We are the executor. We are making ideas into very useful idea. Okay? And then if you look at this, here you are. We actually turn innovations into, you know, something really engineering specific that is going to be useful. So last year, when I listened to an inaugural sort of uh, speech from one of the prime minister, I'm not going to tell you who, which prime minister, you can search it out. When this lady talked to her country, she said, Innovation is the key to our economic, social, and environmental future. Okay, innovations, the importance of this. And then the engineering process is in creating innovations and prosperity. That is, this is very important to our future, to the economy. And more importantly, as most of you actually appreciate, 
the environment because we don't want to end our civilization too soon with viruses, with environmental issues, with climatic changes. Engineers actually, I think, has a critical role in this, what I call the transformation process. That is, we look at something, we look at an idea, and then how we actually make it a change, and then to create something new. This is engineer, this is engineer. I strongly believe in it. After, you know, as an engineer, I've been an engineer for over 30 something years, I must say. Since I graduated from Oxford University, I am a real engineer, I must say, working 10 years in nuclear industry, and then now working as a teaching engineer, practicing engineer, and then innovating new ideas as an engineer. So what did Hong Kong U do for us then? You know, I've been, as I say, working in Hong Kong U uh, since 1997. Since 1997. Out of the 23rd year, 23 years, I don't think here we then give opportunities to students, to teachers, to industry, to make use of good ideas and make something work. The first step of engineering in Hong Kong University, actually, okay, you may say, oh, Hong Kong University is an old university. Yes, of course, it's got the longer history. But we have the first engineering schools. I'm sure some of you realize which department is the longest. Well, okay. Mechanical engineering method. And then we are very top over the world ranking in terms of research, in terms of teaching and learning. And then Hong Kong University has close to 30% international students, which you can mix, be a very internationalized, you know, learning community with a curriculum which empowers some very traditional engineering degree together with some new engineering degree which we works with science and other faculties that you can mix and match. And then, in terms of research, uh, I don't know, you can judge. I think Hong Kong U research is definitely world class. To be more specific, here are some facts. We've got five departments which encompasses, I'm sorry there's no nuclear engineering, but don't think about it. Mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, and all this, even industrial engineering, all this can mix and match to cover the whole of the engineering discipline that you might like. And then we have 10 programs, which I'm going to show you another slide, which has some details in it. And then the faculty will share all this information to you later after the talk. So you don't need to actually make any notes. We have a number of teachers doing different discipline and then large undergraduate community. In terms of degree programs, the degree program actually draw a very strong core which, uh, if you look at that, uh, we have from the base, the university, a common core, and also the engineering common core. In your first year, you will do common years, which I think you have a choice. After a choice, after first year, you can choose any of those programs. Obviously, most importantly, according to your interest, but also based on your performance in particular subjects. For example, you have computer science, you have industrial engineering, you want mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, or you want to build something, civil engineering. And then we got some three very really special program. One of those is engineering science, which is an elite program for someone who may want more general educations. And then biomedical engineering, which we work with the medical faculty on a little bit of medical science. And then, the financial technology, which will work with the uh, you know, uh, faculty of science together with heavy inputs from uh, computer science engineering. And then in terms of interdisciplinary sort of programs, here you are, just to highlight you know, what I've just been saying in the last three programs here, uh, for example, engineering science, general engineering, which I graduated from, I'm an engineering science student, actually. And then we have biomedical engineering, financial technology, and all this. Now, oh, oh, oh well, I will leave this slide later on to uh, Professor Wong, because I'm sure he will, if you've got any questions, he will be more informed uh, about, you know, the grading. But this is a minimum sort of entry requirement for some of the degrees. And then for those who want to know a little bit of inner information, I don't know whether there is any, but if there is, you can ask a bit more questions on, you know, the admission criteria, which, you know, our faculty 
uh, in the past would give you interview and then doing that. Oh, for those who are really ambitious, we have programs together, a joint program with Hong Kong U Cambridge uh, program which you spent two years in Hong Kong University and then three years in Cambridge University. Uh, you know where Cambridge University is? Is it in Italy, right? Okay. No, no, no. Cambridge University is uh, in England, which is not as good as where I come from, I'm sure. At least they lose out in the boat race in uh, River Thames, you know, last year to Oxford University, obviously. But, but no, don't worry, you know, Cambridge University, top of engineering school in England. So, after the five years, you will get actually how many degrees? One, two, three, four, five, all this. Okay, you get degrees from Hong Kong University. You got two degrees from Cambridge University because if you enroll in Cambridge University, I think you automatically get an MA degree without any examinations, right? Uh, this is what I got, right? Uh, the first day I enrolled in Oxford and then seven years later when I graduated, I got an MA, so I got an MA as well. Anyway, and then you, you got another degree from Cambridge University, the Master of Engineering. Oh, one thing, I like this. Now, you might ask, as a student in Hong Kong University, what else you can do apart from the standard curriculum? Wow, this, we got a major donations in building what we call the Time Wing Fund Innovation Wing, which housed a lot of very modern uh, makerspace equipment and facility, including what you're seeing here, I hope, another more interesting facility. And then we have a brainchild of this knowledge exchange, student experiential learning hub, which allows students to come together, different faculty students, different disciplines students, you can even team up with other faculty, you may want to team up with faculty of architecture, faculty of business, and then join teams in innovation and entrepreneurial endeavor. And then we hope, or I hope at least, you will become a founder of some enterprise one day. In terms of how we actually project good ideas, for example, one of the initiatives is called Engineering Inno Show, which we project, uh, give opportunity for student groups to present their projects after the end of the year, and then they could share ideas with teachers, students, and other students, and you know, this is a nice one. Computer gaming, isn't it? That's one of the Inno Show uh, projects. Okay, in terms of opportunity to go further, to go further, wow, you can look at this. Some of these student groups actually participate in international competitions, which they achieve. All these are winning teams, actually. Someone actually do, you know, robotics competitions. Someone actually built some sea rescue robot, and then they go to do some management project like the LV. I'm sure you know where, what LV, right? Ladies, I'm sure you know, you know, nice handbags, right? And then they actually got management project, Robocon, Global Grand Challenge, and then other design projects. I'm sure that will actually give you much more, much more than you just learn sitting in school or listening online to teachers, and there were more. So you can see in the universe of Hong Kong, we actually excel or try to nurture, give an opportunity to students to do much more than just classroom learning in that regard. And then for those who are really interested in doing research, wow, we've got some very exciting, wow, well, this, okay, you've got fellowship program, global internships to some of these very good universities around the world. Uh, oops, how come there's no Oxford University, right? We should add one of them later on, right? No, 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 no worry, look at this. We've got students working on some lights, right? Some specialized optics, laser. We got students working on biomedical engineering, and then we got some material scientists who work with forefront materials. So for those who are interested in going into deep down academic research, we got opportunities for you. So finally, before I stop, I think I'm speaking too long already. Uh, this is a saying. The first two lines is a famous saying from an engineer. As engineers, we are in the position to change the world. If you Google that, you know who actually says that. However, I must add, as engineers, we are in the position to change the world for a better future. And that's, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you very much indeed for this sharing. And I hope you get a little bit more insight as to how engineers actually works especially in turning innovative idea 
into something that have make a change, a new idea that make an impact to serve our society. So thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Right. Now, 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 I don't know whether you got any questions specific to this particular talk. Uh, it, oh, oh I, I, my, my team is very nice. Uh, wow. Oh, Professor Wong, you got a list of questions here already. Oh, does M1, M2 complementary to all this? Oh, I, 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 I think I need to invite our experts here or the authority. This is the authority. Come on, okay. Kenneth. Oh, here you are, Kenneth. Nice job. Although we shouldn't shake hands, but it's okay. I'm going to wa wash my hand right away. Right. Okay, good. This is uh, Professor Kenneth Wong. He is the chairman of the faculty admission committee who oversees the overall admissions, overall admissions of the University of Hong Kong. Now, I can see a lot of questions here. I hope uh, Kenneth will help to enlighten, you know, students, teachers, and other. Thank you, Kenneth. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyway, bye bye. See you later. Okay, uh, I know that uh, we are all that are very remote, but I still encourage you to give a round of pause or a round of light. That's, uh, I know there's a feature, it's uh, in Zoom, that's on the right hand side, there's a chat that uh, at least you can click on it that we know show appreciation that's, uh, to our very, like, uh, uh, very great speaker, uh, Henry. Okay, so well, let's see that uh, what we did, we have some round of applause, so it's uh, and round of light. So uh, that's uh, he did a great job. And okay, so well, I can always say that I'm sending a shoulder of giant. So now he did a great job. So I just keep my I just keep my part. I don't need to talk much about like the, the innovation part. Okay, but I think I can like uh, supplement a little bit. So before I go into the question, I know it's already a long list, and uh, I'm sure we are all enjoying that uh, the the innovation, the part of innovation, just like what you are all using it right now. So at, the, at least like 80 of us that using the Zoom. So in case you don't aware, that Zoom is one of the, I guess, the uh, biggest rise in the past uh, few months. And this is definitely a, a very, very good business. So even though we say that money is not our purpose or not a goal, but this is one of the byproduct. And uh, indeed, one of the co-founder and the CEO of uh, Zoom, in case you don't aware, is actually a computer scientist. Okay, so you see this is one of the you know, evidence, very relevant evidence in these days that so how the innovation can benefit that's our society. Okay, so without further ado, we already have a long list of questions, so I try to uh, like go through it like one by one. And uh, other than that, Henry, we also have to acknowledge of a team of uh, help at the back end, so you probably don't aware that uh, they have a whole crew of, uh, of uh, the help at the back, that's they all working very hard to help uh, su supporting us. Okay, so uh, the first question is related to the quota for 2020. So that's uh, related to our, the main program and uh, um, uh, like the, uh, the main program, uh, uh, the BN program. So roughly speaking, so we can only using the figure that's in the past. So roughly that's around like uh, uh, close to 400, you can put it that way. So for the main program, 6963. For engineering science, uh, 6951. So we have around like 15 to 25. So it's, uh, well, we have some flexibility. So I'm not worried too much if you say that's uh, a uh, great competition. That's uh, I think your interest comes first. And also for the biomedical engineering, that's uh, 6925. We, again, there's around like the range is around 20 to 30. And the FinTech, that's uh, one of the latest uh, program that's been introduced, 624A, that's we also have around like 20 to 30 quota. Okay, so uh, uh, other question that's, uh, well, that's I tried to answer. So asking about like M1, N2, is that like really complementary admission? So uh, I can say that uh, it's preferred, but it's not required. Okay, well, I, can say, I won't say it's uh, mandatory, but it definitely will be very beneficial if you have the M1, M2 for your, uh, uh, for your mission. Okay, and uh, well, that's, I think this is very realistic, even though we're saying that we are not only talking about money, but that's uh, important. That's so uh, with the salary after graduation will be enough for me to survive in Hong Kong. So I, that may sound like an international student, or, but anyway, even local, that's also very concerned. And uh, well, I can say that uh, definitely our, most of our uh, graduate, they, they got employed, so immediately. So you don't need to worry about, okay, I have to, how much I have to weigh before I can a job. So in that case, and at the same time, that's uh, uh, for overseas. So uh, well, whether that is really sufficient or not, I can assure you, well, it really depends on how much you spend, okay? So I, 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 it's very hard to say this is really enough, but if you say just survive, well, I can assure you it can survive. 
Okay, but it's more than a survival. I can tell you that way. So this is a uh, really uh, need uh, a decent life. Okay, again, I cannot guarantee. Okay, you can get a like a become a millionaire or billionaire right after graduation. But we have a track record. But again, we try not to emphasize that. So what will be the like financial achievement that our graduate uh, did? It. Okay, so. Uh, Questions about that are related to physics. Well, definitely, because that's, that's also the reason why that so physics knowledge is required, and this is one of the requirements, especially for the main program and uh, the other program as well. Okay, so that's why physics will definitely be very relevant to our engineering uh, 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 admission as well. Okay, so uh, the difference between uh, studying um, science and engineering, well, uh, because since it's open floor, so it's very hard to say, okay, uh, well, what were the difference? So uh, if I say this is our definition of engineering, that's our son, science colleague may not agree, but at least I can only say this is a personal, like the definition. So in general, people look at that way, engineering is quite like the applied science or the applied knowledge. Well, don't take that when it's a quote, okay, I'm not those guys where we celebrity that doesn't know that's if you quote me in the sense but I would say that's uh because I also graduate at uh, the combined degree of engineering and uh, science major in physics so I roughly have some exposure that so uh, you can also put it that way engineering is uh, try to solve the like the practical problem so again the scientists may also argue we are also solving some problem but it's more fundamental problem so it's uh, just like the topic today we are focusing about like the innovation so put it that way it's how you innovate say in a new knowledge to solve like the, like the problem or emerging problem. So that's what I like to short answer to those kind of uh, uh, the question between uh, engineering and uh, science. Okay, so uh, how many students can enter Hong Kong New Cambridge Joint Scheme? So, uh, well, because this is a very new scheme, so that's uh, the sample point is kind of uh, uh, very rare. So in the past year, or so that's uh, roughly around like 10 students. So you can say it's highly competitive because you can emerge in, we also have to satisfy the entrance requirement for Cambridge University. So that make it like highly competitive for that way. Okay, um, also question like the, the difference between computer science and computer engineering. So um, again, this is, a, it's probably it's a different calling, may have different uh, perspective, but from a, uh, personally, I'm from Triple E Electrical and Electronic Engineering. So from our kind of official definition, we will say that uh, computer engineering is more like, like the integrated approach, look into like the, uh, the integrated system on the side, both software and hardware. Again, computer scientists, uh, uh, colleague, they may say, okay, well, we also have the, the hardware part. So, but I would look at that way. It's uh, how you put it in the system that can be applied like uh, solving like the, the real or uh, the practical problem as well. Okay, um, another question is about like uh, how a job opportunity for um, uh, completion of the degree. And uh, well, as I said, this, uh, all students will pretty much find a job up right after graduation. That's uh, most of them, I can say around 80% will go into find a job like uh, being employed immediately. And then some will go for like research, okay? Just like me, that's how we, uh, we continue for like the research, like the master degree or PhD later on. And some, uh, that is what we call like the further study. Okay, so um, another question is, um, so uh, if I, well, if I fail to obtain like the two to two like minimum requirement having like few five star can that still have a chance well um well for sure we have still have to meet the minimum requirement the entrance requirement of hong kong u okay so that's like uh what's uh, beyond our control that's uh, our whole hong kong you have a like the minimum requirements uh, requi uh in that sense but in case that's uh you're only above uh, just a little bit above of that's a minimum requirement okay but it's uh, may not well or that's kind of in the borderline in the sense so for sure having the five star star will help Okay, and just like you probably aware that uh, we have the new like uh, uh, like uh, account, well, so it's a scoring system. Okay, so five star star basically you have that extra bonus. Okay, so that will definitely in the sense will be uh, beneficial. Okay, once you pass the minimum requirements, uh, that's uh, entrance requirement for Hong Kong U. So in that sense, will be definitely will be a, fan, uh, a big plus. Okay, um, well. Asking about like uh, well a student like after the join 
like the BASC uh, engineering faculty in the second year. So I assume this is talking about like the internal transfer. So in that case, for sure, that always apply for uh, eligible to apply for like internal transfer. But I think that's a piece of advice that's usually if you apply for transfer that you do expect you at least you satisfy like kind of the entrance requirement for that uh, program as well. Let's say this is highly competitive program. So you do expect that uh, they are looking for your GPA or your performance in the past, at least satisfy their requirement. Okay, so this is like, uh, so you can say that uh, we, this is always some uh, track, I mean, that it happened in the past, but at the same time, you do expect that you have to have the uh, satisfy certain uh, requirement in that sense. Okay, so um, the question it's, well, I don't really understand, but let me just go to here. Okay, so about like the procedure of admission to the joint degree with Cambridge. Okay, so uh, that's it's uh, for those actually already enter Hong Kong U, so they will have to apply. So pretty much the first semester, like uh, after they join, okay, and then uh, uh, then you can have to apply that. that uh, well, this year we have a slightly different uh, schedule, but usually that in the first, or pretty much that in the first semester, you apply for um, that uh, joint scheme. Well, I guess I'm speaking too fast. That's, uh, and my colleague worked so hard to try to relay the question to me. And I think that one question about it's uh, when will the interview for Drupal student uh, interview? I think this year because that's of the, the COVID, that's uh, we are not 100% sure, but at, at least at this point, that's the tentative day. It's roughly in the early June. So roughly it's like, you can say that June 1st to June uh, 3rd of June. Okay, again, that's all depends. So, but you can pretty much assume at, as of this point, that's our tentative day will be that uh, for all the Drupal's interview, it's, uh, that is uh, first to third of June. Okay, um, so the question is, uh, it's chemistry required to study in engineering science, so which is, uh, so it's uh, probably already asked, it's, uh, uh, the chemistry is not required, so for admission to engineering science, so that's in case this is your concern. So let's see that's, uh, if I owe, that's overlook any questions. Okay, so one question is related to, um, is it possible to do like some minor in other subjects such as finance? So definitely that, thanks for asking that one because this year we have a, uh, well, not just minor. In fact, this year we have like, uh, well, uh, we, in fact, we have it in the past, but this year we, uh, that's uh, we try to also uh, emphasize this is like we have the, the main program and the, the BBA, like the double degree program that way. So this is, uh, uh, this is like the kind of a very big plus for the, especially those have uh, kind of, uh, uh, both that kind of a combined interest into the major in that sense. So uh, out of that, for sure, that's also possible to do the minor, that's, uh, if, such as uh, the finance. But other than that, so in case you also want to do like the, another major, so this is also like uh, possible this year as well. Okay, uh, one specific question is about like, uh, what can, well, well I, I just, with a, basically that, what was the Gaokao score in order to enter the, the interview? Well, it's very hard to say because uh, well, this actually depends from, uh, well, also different score for different province. So I cannot give a single number saying, okay, this is number that, uh, that can guarantee for interview. So uh, I, I cannot say, uh, comment on that uh, specific score. Okay, because there uh, are different province that they have a different score. Uh, in that sense. Okay, so um, can our student choose engineering? That's, uh, well, 
uh, essentially, as I said, this is like with the requirement that's uh, uh, so all students need to take the, for, for our admission requirements. So uh, math and physics are required, and uh, definitely for physics, that's uh, the compulsory requirement. Well, even though you can argue that's uh, um, for the FinTech, so it's, just, it's okay, that's uh, this technology. That's, uh, so in the sense that uh, you can say it's required, so um, for the entrance requirement, in a sense. Why did you choose? Okay, well, uh, so one question is, uh, I guess my colleague probably can help that. Uh, why did you choose to study engineering? So what thoughts or ability did it bring to you? Well, again, that's very good. That answers, ask, uh, answers such a question because this is very personal. So for me, I find this is a very exciting that uh, can kind of empower me to solve like practical problem. Okay, so uh, I'm doing, my major is electrical and electronic engineering. So for me, I'm so excited that to solve the problem that relevant to that. And specifically, I'm working in uh, something like related to optics, about the laser, just like the, uh, that's sort of, sort of the picture, what we show it, how to using, using light to solve some very life uh, relevant questions. So for example, like doing the detection, like uh, early diagnosis of the cancer and all these things, that's, uh, I find all these very fascinating. Okay, so my colleagues already rounding me. That's uh, so I try to round up those questions uh, kind of quickly. And uh, so, in case I miss your question, so don't worry about it. My colleagues still answering in the back side. As I said, they are, we have a very fascinating team that's working in the back. So uh, I would say that I have to stop at this point because I don't want to keep the, every single one staying here. But again, if you still have any question, that's we will check, uh, try to answer all of them. Okay, so uh, that will be conclude our, our section. So again, that's, uh, let's give a round of light or pause that's from your back remotely. That's uh, for our support from, the, uh, from Henry and our uh, very amazing uh, staff at the back. Okay, so also thanks for your attention. I wish you all have a very pleasant weekend and hope to see you, some of you that's uh, in the future in person, not just in the full of Zoom, that's uh, at Hong Kong U or other relevant activity. Okay, so enjoy the weekend. I will hope to see you in the future. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thank you. 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 Thank you.